Walter Cristiano, a PhD student from the University of Turin in Italy. And you must have heard uh, during the last days uh, a lot about injury stuff, especially this morning. Uh, so you have heard about uh, rhythmic injuries, uh, sexual differences in the song and other features, but uh, we still have to talk about specific features of cooling in radio song, which are the non-liarities of cooling in the singing of all these uh, amazing species. And that is, that is something I'm going to do now. Um, these are irregularities in the, in the vocal production uh, originate uh, by the vibration of, of the vocal folds, which is indeed the high non-linear system. And um, such linear, such regularities, uh, sounds generally harsh. Uh, they are perceived as, as something between the harmonic sound and, uh, and noise. And if we consider, and you want to, if we want to investigate the occurrence of the linear phenomena, uh, we cannot ignore uh, no human primates, uh, which are species that frequently exhibit, exhibit nonlinear phenomena in their vocalization. And, of course, among them, uh, we may want to investigate those species exhibiting uh, uh, harmonic signals pretty often, such the singing primates, uh, which represent the most distinct species when it comes to vocal emission, of course. Um, you, we, we saw today, during the presentation of Marco Gamba, that um, there are only four families of primates, uh, which we consider as singing, and singing primates, uh, but uh, today we will focus, uh, as, uh, as I just mentioned, on the Indri de family, on the Indri Indri, which is a uh, uh, neighbor inhabited in the rainforest, the eastern rainforest of Madagascar, and uh, which is a critical in the inhibit species. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on the ecology and behavior of these species because you have heard a lot uh, this morning, but uh, just to recap uh, which uh, this uh, species does. Um, they do songs, they perform songs that starts with harsh sounds, so a real evidence of a non-linear phenomenon occurring in song, which is followed by harmonic frequency modulated units. And uh, these songs that we saw that are sexually dimorphic, and uh, they are uttered basically by the dominant pairs and uh, to which uh, join often the other group members, and they serve they are useful to communicate the long distance between different groups. So, the aims of our study um, was, uh, were to understand whether the linear phenomena occurring in the harmonic part of the song um, happen more often at the beginning or at the end of the song, so in a particular part of the singing of these speeches. And we were also wondering if um, the linear phenomena are randomly or not distributed across the individuals. Um, I have to specify here that we didn't look at the roar, we didn't consider the roars, which is actually an evident non-linear phenomenon, because we, we were interested in understanding um, which is the role um, or where um, non-linearities come from uh, the, within the harmonic units. So we looked at the harmonic part of the song. And we considered it uh, based on previous research, uh, which provided different explanations for the occurrence of this phenomena in the animals uh, during the last 20 years, uh, we formulated our hypothesis. Uh, and the first one is that physiological constraints may limit the production of harmonic sounds, and also that nonlinear phenomena may involve uh, individual cues um, to uh, members of the, same, of the same species and be associated, for example, with many strategies. But uh, we uh, also formulate, uh, consider the hypothesis that uh, uh, tell, tell us that nonlinear phenomena may vary according to the age class. And uh, based on that body of research and right on those hypotheses, we formulated our predictions. Um, the first one is that the longer the duration, the higher the number of nonlinear phenomena we may expect to find in the harmonic part of the song and also that nonlinear phenomena would increase in number as the song proceeds. And we, may, we also predicted that the occurrence of nonlinear phenomena would show an individual variation in terms of sex and age of the individuals. So uh, we collected the data in the 
beautiful, amazing place uh, in the forest of Armiza, the protected areas of Armiza. Um, the songs come from uh, diff seven different groups of Greece for a total of 105 songs and to 28 individuals, uh, um, adult male, females, and uh, juvenile males and females as well. So uh, we, okay, okay. we basically identified and manually selected each collinear <coughs> phenomenon of grief within the song. So we read a, a text file where we uh, write down uh, the codes indicating NLP, like for example NLP1, indicating the uh, nonlinear phenomenon occurring in that specific part of the song. And I would like now, if I will be able to do that, to uh, let you listen a normal unit emitted by a male that meets uh, the that meets the and a uh, unit without uh, nonlinearities. Okay, yeah. Then another unit um, that may be a little bit tricky to to get here in this in this room, but. Uh, this is a, a linear phenomenon occurring uh, in the unit, which is the subharmonics. Okay, and uh, here we have roars, which basically is this part, uh, the beginning of the song, uh, and uh, they are clearly different in terms of uh, uh, perceptions of the sound. Um, we identified different types of linear of the linearities, uh, including the deterministic chaos, vibration, frequency jumps, and as I said, subharmonics. And uh, um, these, all these uh, features uh, occur sometimes even in some vocal acrobatics uh, uh, emitted by famous singers, such as, for example, Brian Johnson of the ACDC uh, or La La um, Even if uh, we as humans, uh, we don't produce uh, so many uh, nonlinearities compared to the non-human primates. Um, we extracted three temporal parameters. Uh, the first one was the song duration, which means the, the total length of the song, starting from the first roar emitted by a particular individual to the end of the last unit emitted. We then extracted the individual contribution for each individual we considered in the studies. So uh, we uh, calculated the length um, of the singing, starting from the first unit emitted to the end of the last unit emitted by the same individual. And then we looked at the phonation, which is the sum of all the units emitted at the means. That is the actual singing of the animal. We run some, uh, some models um, looking at the occurrence of the, uh, of the linear phenomena in the song of the Ingris, uh, and uh, we run a model for each of the temporal parameters we uh, extracted. And we also looked at the quartiles of the duration, so at the, at the quartiles of the, the three different temporal parameters, um, to understand that if uh, the quartiles affect or not the, our. Uh, the, the linear, non linear phenomena we are looking uh, we are looking at. So what uh, what do we get? Uh, we got uh, a lot of nonlinearities occurring in the song. In, even if the species is a species which produces clearly harmonic units very often, um, here there is just there are just other examples of how some nonlinear phenomena um, look. Uh, when you when you look at the spectrum, so uh, for example, we have the, uh, the first one is a typical maybe unit, uh, and then the, the one in the middle is uh, um, you can see uh, very easily I think the subharmonics which occur between the uh, natural harmonics of the of the first fundamental frequency, and then we have uh, another uh, nonlinear phenomenon which occur quite often in the in songs which is a, a mixed unit, so a unit that starts with a lot of noise and then it translates into a clear harmonic sound like the normal uh, units that they generally emit. Um, we found the positive effect of all the three temporal parameters uh, on the total occurrence of the linear phenomena, but we did not find any evidence of, um, yeah, of uh, sex, for sex and age. And, uh, 
we also test we also tested each model against each other, and we found that it's the actual singing, so it's definition, the best predictor of the ringer phenomena in the result. We also found that the quartiles predict the occurrence of collinear phenomena. And again, we saw that while some duration was not significant, individual contribution and phonation of overall um, were uh, statistically significant in predicting uh, the occurrence of, uh, of, the, of the near phenomena during the song. So, uh, again, we did not find any, any evidence for the role of sex or age. So, our predictions, the first two were confirmed, and in fact, it's the law, it's the duration that um, predicts the, the occurrence of nonlinearities in the degree song. And also, nonlinear phenomena would increase in number as the songs proceed, but the occurrence of such phenomena uh, would, uh, didn't show any uh, individual variation. And that um, means that probably, uh, in increase, it's uh, the physiological constraint which uh, limits the production of harmonic sounds and leads to the occurrence of nonlinearities. And this might be a trade-off between the need of conveying information at the long distance and performing these actual complex and uh, long and loud songs. And maybe simply associated this, uh, this phenomenon to uh, maybe the byproduct of the vocal emission, of course, uh, but uh, we didn't find any uh, evidence of uh, adaptive, uh, any evidence uh, which may confirm adaptive hypothesis for the occurrence of such phenomena in these species. Um, I would like to thank, of course, all, um, all of my colleagues and uh, you for your attention, and uh, I'm here for any questions. Thank you.